In this episode, let's have a look at two new shotgun microphones for your camera top from Asden, namely the SMX-15 and the SMX-30. These two microphones were sent to me free of charge from Asden. I did not pay for them with my own money. That's the full disclosure. Also, this entire episode was recorded with the SMX-30 or the SMX-15. I'll annotate that on each shot. Also, we didn't know Post-processing, aside to loudness normalized to minus 23 LUFS, which is the European broadcast standard for loudness. We didn't do any EQ, no noise reduction, no compression, and no anything else. First, what's the difference between the 15 and the 30? They're both based on the same capsule that's in the SGM 250, which we reviewed last summer. But these mics are made for mounting on your camera and have 3.5 millimeter TRS plugs so that you can record directly to camera. The SMX30 also has a set of cardioid stereo microphones, which make this model useful for additional circumstances, such as when you want to capture ambient sound versus just dialogue. First of all, in terms of build quality, it feels like a high density, sturdy plastic, including the interference tube, which is a little different. Typically those are made out of metal. The mesh around the stereo mics on the 30 feels like it is metal. The power switch feels solid, but the others seem to have a little bit of play in them. Not a huge deal, but something to note. The cold shoe for mounting into the cold shoe mount is plastic with a metal quarter 20 tap so that you can mount it pretty much anywhere. You have a quarter 20 screw. That can be some boom poles and any camera cages, things of that nature. This is how I mount it to get it within 40 centimeters of the person speaking. This produces much better sound than if you mount it on top of your camera and your camera is more than a meter away. Now, here we are doing the on-camera test. The camera is approximately two to two and a half meters from me right here. In this case, I have the Asden SMX30 on top of the camera. I have the gain level set to plus 20 dB on the microphone and plus six, sorry, minus six dB on the Panasonic GH4. For comparison. Both models come with a foam wind cover and Asden told me that they're also getting ready to release furry wind covers for purchase separately. So that'll give you an option for when you're recording outdoors in slight breezes. Comes with a straight 3.5 millimeter TRS cable which is designed to connect to your camera or audio recorder. The shock mount looks really similar to the Rycote Lyre on the Rycote Lyre systems or a lot of the Rode video mics also have that. In my experience it works reasonably well. This one tends to pick up a little bit of noise, so you do still have to be careful if you're going to mount it on top of your camera and be moving a lot. In terms of size and weight, the 15 weighs 135 grams and is 145 millimeters long. The 30 weighs in at 145 grams and is also 145 millimeters long. In terms of gain control, you have three options, minus 10 dB, zero, which is kind of unity or default setting, and plus 20 dB. This really gives you plenty of gain for almost any camera or recorder. What this allows you to do is rely on the relatively clean gain that the microphone provides versus the camera that you're recording to, which often will not have a very good preamplifier. Also has a high pass filter, which is good if you need to cut out hum from AC or when you're moving the mic around a lot. Now here's an example with the high pass filter turned on. This is useful if you have just a little bit of noise that you're trying to manage, specifically hum, like from an air conditioner or heater. Uh, maybe a running refrigerator or something of that nature. This can really help in those sorts of circumstances. Also can help if you're moving the microphone around a lot. Say for example, you have it mounted right on top of your camera, you're doing running gun type shooting. This can help manage some of that noise that results when you move the camera. It does have this very clever auto power feature, which automatically shuts the microphone off when the camera is turned off. So you don't accidentally drain the microphone's battery. Really kind of a nice touch. In terms of power, it works with two AA batteries. It's easy to open the door and access those. Asden claims up to 24 hours battery life. I have over 10 hours on a set of Eneloop Pro batteries so far, so it looks like it's tracking that direction. It does come with this pleather pouch for storage and transport. It's a nice touch, not always included with competitors' mics in the same price range. And very importantly, comes with a 10-year warranty, which is fantastic. In terms of self-noise generated by the microphone or how quiet it is, in the silent portions of your recordings. I found that with the Zoom H1 that I recorded to, I set it to an input level of 70 out of 100, then I normalized the audio to minus 23 LUFS, and the practical noise floor sat at minus 62 dB. So this includes any sort of room ambiance, so there isn't a lot of noise generated by the microphone or the recorder. 
I'm happy when my final audio's noise floor sits below minus 60 dB, so this is really quite good. Here is a sample recorded with the SMX15. You may say it sounds very similar. It should. <laughs> it's the exact same capsule with the uh, shotgun microphone. So as far as comparison with the SMX30 and the 15, sound quality for mono dialogue is exactly the same with this short shotgun microphone. One great feature of these two microphones is their price point is pretty aggressive. The SMX30 comes in at $250 US. That's quite good if you consider that it has both the mono shotgun mic and the stereo mics. The SMX15, on the other hand, if you just need a dialogue shotgun microphone, comes in at about $200 US. So really kind of a nice price point. Overall, I think that this is a fine choice for those that are looking for a mic that has a very natural sound. It doesn't have that kind of hyped low end that you sometimes find with other microphones. This is a completely subjective thing. If you like that very rich <laughs> low end, you probably want to look elsewhere. But this one has what I would consider a fairly natural sound overall. So I hope you found that helpful. Go ahead and leave any questions you have down below. And if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do that. We'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.